From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the New News. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our Friday forecast, plus Zoo Montana's Red Panda makes its Super Bowl pick. But first, our top stories. Big news happening in Helena this week regarding gender-affirming health care and drag shows. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian reports. On Thursday, the House Judiciary Committee held a hearing on a bill intended to keep minors from attending drag shows. The testimony centered on whether those shows could be appropriate for youth. This is not a good, wholesome, fun event. These events are some of the most positive, happy, accepting events I have ever attended, and I have never experienced sexualized behavior at them. House Bill 359, sponsored by Republican Representative Braxton Mitchell of Columbia Falls, would prohibit drag performances that, quote, appeal to a prurient interest at public schools and libraries and prevent businesses that host those performances from admitting minors. Supporters said drag shows can't be separated from sexuality, but opponents said that was a false conflation and drag can be performed in a way that would be appropriate for minors. Drag Story Hour, I think it really speaks to those things three values I mentioned, love, community, and acceptance. We really work to show kids what queer joy looks like, and not just queer joy, but what it means to be authentically you. Mitchell told MTN he would bring an amendment to move away from a gender-based definition of the affected performances, and he expected other changes to the language could also be made. A choice to do that if a private facility so, so, so chooses. I might not agree with that, but it's their choice. But taxpayer-funded facilities should not be um, sponsoring events such as this. So. After the hearing, the committee advanced another bill, House Bill 361, that would prevent schools from disciplining students for calling another student by their legal name or sex. Those supporting the bill said they didn't want students to be subjected to discrimination complaints, but those opposing it said it could open the door to intentional misgendering of transgender students. The committee added an amendment that would allow school action if the behavior rose to the level of bullying. Also on Thursday, the full Montana House narrowly approved House Bill 230 on a final vote. The bill would remove exceptions for school employees from a state law against distributing obscene material to minors. Supporters said it was a simple change bringing rules for schools in line with other organizations, but opponents said obscenity complaints were more likely to target LGBTQ content. Also this week, the Montana Senate gave final approval to a bill that would prohibit gender-affirming procedures for transgender youth. That bill will now go over to the House for consideration. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. China is likely responsible for flying spy balloons like the one seen in Billings over some 40 countries. More information coming out during a congressional briefing this week with Senator John Tester playing a main role. MTN's David Jay reports. The military gathered items from the balloon, including pieces of cameras and antennas, with officials saying the balloon's route took it past ballistic missile fields in a B-2 stealth bomber base. It didn't fly over us by accident. It was intentional. Do we know what the Chinese communist government was looking for? Senator, we have some very good guesses about that, uh, and we are learning more as we exploit the contents of the balloon and the payload itself. Montana Senator Steve Dane said he left the meeting with more questions. In a news release, he said it is completely unacceptable and infuriating that the Chinese spy balloon was allowed to hover over Montana and our missile bases and was then allowed to travel across the entire United States before it was brought down. After the hearing, Republican Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana said the photographer in Billings alerted the country. The president has left the impression that if someone in Montana had not spotted the balloon, and called CBS, and CBS didn't print the story, the White House would never to have told us. Desire to keep things classified has to do with not wanting to disclose to the public things that might be inconvenient politically for the department. The Department of Defense says that was not the intent. In Billings, David J, MTN News. The newest branch of the U.S. military, the Space Force, has a small detachment at Malmstrom Air Force Base. Representatives of a nonprofit formed to raise awareness about the Space Force say incidents like the Chinese spy balloon highlight the importance of having military surveillance above the planet. There are also opportunities for civilians to volunteer for the Space Force to keep eyes on the sky. 
kind of lends to is the fact that we don't have good surveillance techniques uh, for the air domain. Now let's extend those surveillance capabilities that we have uh, in the air domain and extend that out into the space domain. So if the Chinese are doing that with balloons currently over sovereign airspace, what is happening in the space domain today? And that's a critical aspect of the Space Force and what they're thinking about every single day. Malmstrom is home to Space Operations Squadron Detachment 1 of 22. Officials say the 17-member unit is serving classified cyber missions. Back in 2020, an 18-year-old woman, Linnea Mills, died while in a scuba diving class in Glacier National Park's Lake McDonald. Today, we're learning a lawsuit alleging negligence on the part of a local diving business and a national diving association has been settled. It highlighted the events and mistakes that led to Mills' death, including instructors with little experience. Mills had rented gear from Gold Dive that did not work properly and died after struggling with her dry suit and slipping from a ledge. The instructor, Debbie Snow, did not notice her struggling. Mills' body was later recovered from the water at 127 feet after heroic attempts by a fellow diver to save her. The family has since formed the Linnea Foundation in her honor. The National Park Service just completed the transfer of 112 bison from Yellowstone National Park to the Fort Peck Reservation near Poplar. The bison were part of a large family group of seven males, 53 females, and 52 calves. The animals completed brucellosis quarantine protocol. Since 2019, more than 400 bison have been transferred from Yellowstone to tribal land across 12 states. And that's a look at some of the day's top stories. Happy Friday, everybody. TGIF boom as we cruise on into the weekend. Let's take a look at your U.S. outlook before we get into our main forecast here in just a few minutes. Uh, today, we're going to go with a high of 29 with sunshine in Minneapolis, Boston, and New York tag teaming at 57. Windy in Boston, but uh, the Big Apple, lots of sunshine. Today, down in Miami, a mix of sun and clouds, maybe more clouds than sun, with a high getting up to about 82. Amarillo, 44 today with lots of sunshine. Los Angeles, a mix of sun and clouds, high today getting up to 74. Your weather headlines for the 48s, parts of the northeast, mixed precipitation and heavy snow possible today. Should taper off tonight. Across the southeast, heavy rain and possible uh, severe thunderstorms, maybe as early as today, definitely by tomorrow. In the central and southern Appalachians, heavy wet snow and or sleet Saturday night into Sunday morning. For us, pretty nice across the week and then some changes next week. Take a look coming up. You see this little black dot? It's right here. This is a person, and it's what many in Wyoming are calling a miracle in the Bighorn Mountains. It is a missing man. He was spotted by helicopter fighting for his life, climbing out of waist deep snow after his snowmobile got stuck. He was pretty out of it. He never waved at the helicopter. They talked to him afterwards. He never heard or knew there was a helicopter, and we were right over him a couple times. Mark Watkins is a contract pilot, but on this Monday mission, he was the spotter running radio, GPS, and satellite phone calls to search and rescue. As crews in the air and on the ground frantically tried to find a missing snowmobiler before the sun went down. It was exhausting. The snow conditions were were very trying and definitely put us our skills to, to the test. We were having anywhere from waist deep to shoulder deep, basically bottomless snow, basically like quicksand. We brought in some professional guides to assist us because of the technicality and they were even having issues. The 57-year-old Sheridan County snowmobiler vanished Sunday. Crews later learned he'd gotten stuck and spent the night in the cold starting a fire to survive. He last made phone contact just after 4 a.m. Monday morning. The train uh, was steep. It was heading into uh, the Box Canyon of the Tongue River area. And after a day of searching with darkness setting in yet again, concerns were rising. But miraculously, just before sunset Monday, Watkins spotted the missing man from high above, a tiny dot in the forest. Within our first ridge line, we went into a valley and sure enough, on the right side, I could see him trying to hike out. He may have been 50 or 100 yards from the top where there was 
you know, not just trails, but a turnaround for the sleds up there. But it was so steep they couldn't see. The sheriff's office says the man was hypothermic and suffering from frostbite on his hands and feet. But he survived. And while the man hasn't been publicly identified, he's now back home with his family. I did hear that there was no permanent damage. He went to a specialized burn unit down in Denver. I did get a call from the, his wife, and she was very appreciative. A life saved thanks to a group of 30-some volunteers who didn't give up. In Wyoming, Diane Parker, MTN News. Up next, Miller's in with another check of the day's weather, plus Zoo Montana Animal picks its choice for the Super Bowl. That story up next. The MTN Noon News continues right after this.